Hi guys, Tom here. Um, I'm sitting here with uh, Dr. Colleen Zoller of Susquehanna University. Um, and uh, we'd like to talk to her about her take uh, as a philosophy professor on uh, travel and our uh, trials and tribulations that uh, face us ahead. So Colleen, thank you for joining us. My pleasure. Um, so uh, I'd like to start with a post that we put up um, about a week ago on our website. Uh, and it was entitled Grazing. Um, which is a term that I borrowed from you. And uh, I have to, um, uh, apparently, uh, I, I don't think I was quite as, um, as clear about what grazing is supposed to mean from a <laughs> philosophical standpoint. So I wonder if you could shed some light on that subject. Sure. So it's a term that I actually stole from Plato, who has Socrates use it as an analogy for education. So Socrates was the kind of teacher who thought it would be better to have students go out and graze in the world and experience it for themselves, kind of what in today's parlance we call experiential learning, versus his rival educators had the style of trying to feed ideas and information to students, like they'd have them memorize things. So Socrates just thought that was totally the wrong way to go about learning things, and he preferred to be like a shepherd who would put people out to graze. Mm -hmm. I think he was right about that. Yeah? I do. Um, do you think... Uh do you think bringing in a community of voices is, uh, is essentially a good thing, or do you think it kind of convolutes things? Well, it certainly can convolute issues to have a multiplicity of perspectives, but I think you can wind up with the best view if you have a chance to graze from among a variety of perspectives. I mean, every time anyone's ever changed their mind about anything, they should be glad they encountered a, another perspective that prompted them to change their mind. Mm -hmm. um, now, in our post about grazing, we uh, we were talking about grazing in almost a literal sense. Like I, uh, I was talking about it as you know, as always being a sort of a picky eater and trying to expand <laughs> my uh, my my boundaries. Wait, you're trying to sell somebody on the story that you're a picky eater? Well, I, I was. I was. <laughs> I'm not sure I believe that. I was for a long, long time, and it, and recently I've been trying to break out. In utero, of that. I was a very picky eater. <laughs> um, well, regardless. <laughs> um, I wondered uh, that, with with regard to some, you know, something like that, something like a, you know, culinary taste. How else could could this idea be applied to mm. um, to the rest of our lives? Well, it's funny that you should bring up the direct food issue because I was actually a picky eater for most of my life until my first big travel experience. Um, the first big travel experience I had was I studied abroad in Greece, mm -hmm. and Greeks like to eat foods like onions that I previously thought were disgusting and slimy. I didn't realize their value. Mm -hmm. So that experience just opened me up to tr trying things I'd never eaten before, and it was all concurrent with experiencing things I'd never experienced before in a way that just changed me so fundamentally that I think it really was the basis of like my adult personality. Mm -hmm. But maybe that didn't get enough to the heart of your no, question. I, no, I, that was good, that was good. Um, and, uh, well, on that on that same note, like, did you ever have you ever come across um, in your travels? You have done quite a bit of traveling, if I'm not mistaken. You know, within the United States and uh, and Around overseas. The world, yeah. yeah. Um, and I wonder, have you ever encountered um, any uh, any idea or ideolo ideology that you just simply could not reconcile yourself with that you just couldn't get along with? Yes, there have been some. So in my experience, a couple of years ago in Nicaragua. Stayed at this place, it's an orphanage, and it's run by these evangelical Christians. And one of the main things that they do is that they encourage all of the kids who live there not to have premarital sex, but in particular the women, who, the girls who live there. And I, of course, as a feminist, found that kind of jarring, especially when I heard a specific story about a way that a specific young woman had been treated in public in the church after it had been found out that she had had sex with someone who was also a member of that church. And I, so I just found this all kind of deplorable and I sort of hated the fact that part of my trip to Nicaragua was staying with these people, forcing these values on youngsters. But I, and I was complaining about it to no end to everyone I was hanging out with there until one of them said, well, you just have to look at it from their perspective. I mean, a young girl here, if she were to get pregnant before she's married, what's going to happen to her? I mean, her life is going to be even harder than that same situation would be in the U.S. And so I suddenly realized that maybe in a different context, a value that I still do not agree with, 
maybe there is a little bit more reason for considering it in certain contexts than I had ever considered before. And so I still don't agree with that value, but I, it just it showed me that when you put yourself in conversation with people from a different circumstance, that you might see things differently, and you might you know you might not agree, you might turn you might not turn around and agree with this idea that you resisted, but you can kind of see where someone is coming from at least, mm -hmm. and that. Those are pretty important experience for me. Sure. Um, and in turn, though, ha have you ever been in a situation where one of your core values or your core <laughs> beliefs was just was just total, totally looked down upon? And, and Every day even, even living in the United States? Yeah. I mean, the things that, some of the things that matter a great deal to me are completely undervalued, mocked even by mm -hmm. our society. I mean... Such as? I mean, just philosophy in general. I mean, they'll just caring about logic and abstract reasoning, but in practical contexts, I think most people just think that's a total joke. Mm -hmm. Most people don't read. I, I don't want to be too cynical and say most people, but I mean, America is not exactly the most intellectual country. Mm -hmm. And so being me in this country sort of means I feel pretty alienated a lot of the time. Okay. Well, how about, how about abroad though? Like, have, have, you ever, uh, have you ever been outside of your comfort zone? And um, and been in a spot where uh, where what was really important to you, hmm. um, or like or something that you maybe maybe took for granted, you know, something even more simple than than um, than philosophy, you know, just just a simple, you know, any, even any any little facet of your lifestyle that just didn't pan out uh, <laughs> to other people. Let me think. Hmm. I don't know. That's that's kind of hard to say. I mean, I guess. Certainly people have those little experiences all the time. I mean, that's why it's hard for me to think of one. Mm -hmm. But off the top of my head, I'm kind of having a hard time thinking of one. I mean, it's, it's a more general experience for me. I mean, the other, sure. and also maybe it's pretty telltale that I have most of these experiences right here on U.S. soil mm -hmm. <laughs> and not abroad. I don't know, it's perhaps kind of telling. But um, I mean, I guess the other, the other main experience that I have here in the U.S. that makes me feel like things that are really important to me that I really value are are misunderstood and or mocked by others is, as I said before, being a feminist. I mean, most people in the U.S. think that that's the dirtiest F word they've ever heard, <laughs> <laughs> um, mostly because they don't really know what it is. Or worse yet, they think they know what it is because they've been told by our media that it's a bunch of non-leg shaving lesbians who want to kill men and so on. And so I think that that's another thing that is a central value of mine, to know what feminism really is and to see it play out for the better in our world. but. Put that on a bumper sticker in the U.S. and you'll get a smashed car window, for sure. <laughs> I believe it. Well, um, 